Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks. I'm Lori LeBay, the founder and CEO of not only Alzheimer's Speaks Radio, but Alzheimer's Speaks in general. And bottom line, we're an advocacy-based company providing multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort. And the company was started because of my mom was on a journey with dementia for 30 years. And our family was like many others, feeling lost and unsupported and think, and there's got to be more resources out there, but I don't know how to find them. And so our goal is really to raise everyone's voice from those who are living with dementia and diagnosed, their families, professionals that are providing all different types of service products and tools to authors and movie directors and singers and songwriters and researchers. We believe everybody's voice needs to be heard. And maybe you're a person out there who has not heard of dementia or not been touched. It's important for us to hear from you, too, because we need to raise awareness of this situation and in what, what families are going through when this hits their home. So that's a little bit about us. We also help other companies expand their brand footprint through our audience. And then, of course, there's you our listeners, who we would be nothing without you. And I am so grateful for each and every one of you because you've been so loyal and committed. You see, your likes, your clicks, your shares, I know they don't take much time to do, but they're powerful and they have had such an impact in terms of the growth and the spread of the word of of Alzheimer Speaks and the work that we do. You've gotten us recognized by Oprah, by Maria Shriver, by Dr. Oz, by AARP, and so many others. And that isn't us. That's you believing that this information needs to get out. And so again, I can't thank you enough because you're making a difference in other people's lives. In all of your you know, Facebook friends or your LinkedIn colleagues or your Twitter tribes or your Instagram peeps, doesn't make, make any difference where, but there are people out there that are dealing with dementia that haven't told a soul yet. And the more information we can get out to them, the easier it's going to be for them to grab it and have a conversation. So please continue sharing. Um, it is much appreciated. And also, think about being a guest on our show. Like I said, we are open to hearing everyone's voice, and you are one of them. So welcome to our community, and um, I would love to hear from you. You can contact me by going to alzheimerspeaks.com directly. There's a big contact button in the upper corner. So let's get to our show today because it's, it's so fun what this man is doing and he has gotten international recognition. People are really, really excited about his work. And so I'm just so honored to have with us today, Lenny White. He is the first world dementia friendly barber for men. And that is for men that can't get out and go to the barber shop anymore. He provides this pop-up service, which creates that barber feeling for his clients. And so they don't feel lost and left out and brings back dignity and, and fun. So welcome, Lenny. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, all the way from Ireland, doing great. Well, good. Well, I appreciate our time difference in, in trying to coordinate this and you being able to take the time to, to be with us today. Before I start with our line of questions about your work, I always like to ask everyone if they've been touched personally by dementia with family or close friends, just to give our audience a base. Well, for me, um, in the past, it was just working in, in sort of the care industry, about 20 years, I get into dementia. But in recent times, my grandmother, who is 97, um, has just been diagnosed um, recently with dementia. It is in the family now. It wasn't before, but recently it's just come into play. So uh, I've been touched with it through friends and family now. Okay. Well, and, and at 90, in her 90s getting it, she held on pretty dang long. So kudos to grandma. <laughs> with that. 97 and she's still living at home. Wow, good for her, good for her. Well, I want you to tell people, how did you come into setting up your barber business? Well, for me, it was, really, it was a personal thing. Um, I was actually married with five kids, and I got divorced about three years ago. And I think when you have those you know, challenges in life, it gets you thinking about what you want to do, what you want to be. And I was in, in a job that I, I, didn't, I didn't really particularly enjoy. I was in marketing and sales for 20 years. Although the money was good, um, I had a good lifestyle, I wasn't very fulfilled. So I decided to do a little barber course in my local tech. And I, I finished that. It was about a, a 
12 month course but in the back of my mind I always had an idea because I used to watch when I used to work in care homes when I was 17 I used to be a dishwasher and I used to work in a care home and I used to have to go out and serve the residents food and I loved interacting with those that had dementia back then the word dementia wasn't really used it was you know they're senile or they're forgetful you know different names are being used and I didn't really know much about it but I I knew that I felt comfortable in that surrounding I used to love speaking to them and hearing their stories and I used to watch the hairdresser come in and you know bring the ladies out into the her wee room and I used to think to myself god that would be really nice wouldn't it that's a nice job again I just had the thought I would like to be a barber in a care home and that's when I really started to pursue my new career wow that's that's interesting but i i I also find it interesting when i because i interview people all over the world and there's always something it seems like when they were a young child that drew them to their passion and i think so many people don't look at that but i don't think i've met a person yet who hasn't if they really truly look back the dots are there that have connected them to where they are today. And I find that fascinating. It's amazing because even I feel like all my life, like I never knew what I wanted to be. I was stuck in sales. I wasn't really qualified in anything. And I didn't have a direction because I didn't know what I wanted to be. But it was staring me right in the face. You know, it was there. But I had to go through all those different challenges in life. And it all happened at exactly the right time. Yeah, It was so easy. It happened so easily because I was so worried about how can I leave my job? I was on good money. I had, you know, I had five kids to feed. I had a mortgage on my own. You know, how am I going to start a new career? Because I would have to start at the very bottom and work my way up. And that was always my fear. It was always money, 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 money. I didn't even have to worry about that in the end. I mean, within within three months of me, you know, working part-time in, a care, in care homes doing the barbering, I was able to leave my job. I got so busy. Oh, that's great. Well, and I know for many, you know, my mom was in a nursing home for 14 years. The hairdressers seemed to rotate. They had one for a long period of time, and then everyone else just kind of bounced in and out because a lot of people have a difficult time. They don't they don't have the passion. They don't have the patience and, and the creativity, which I can't wait to talk about. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your pop-up barber shop? Basically, my pop-up barber shop, Like I say, it's for men that can't get to the shop anymore, you know what I mean? So in care homes, as you will know, it's always been the men going to the hairdresser and the hairdresser will give them a little quick cut and then they'll be out the door. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. Yep. And those men are getting brought in one at a time and they are sitting with women and the salons they use are all predominantly pink. They'll be old-fashioned you know hairdressing pictures there'll be it'll be nothing it'll be nothing to resemble a barber shop it's just really for the women so that's what I knew was missing I knew that in care homes there was nothing really for the men there's so many activities for ladies there's nails there's makeup there's pamper sessions but the men were getting left out and it's not nobody it's no one's fault it's just the way that it is you know there is only so much men can do um and activity therapists are always usually women you know what i mean there's not many men in care i wanted to create a men's day which was just for the men and um i started my business it was back in november 2016 and i had a friend that worked as an activity therapist in a care home i just told her my idea you know, maybe we could get this set up. She said yes. She spoke to the manager and I was able, once I finished my diploma, I got my qualifications and got my police checks and all my my insurance, I was able to come in and do a little tester day. So that tester day I had brought, my mum had bought me a jukebox for the kids, a small jukebox, really old fashioned. And we got a couple of like Dean Martin CDs and Elvis Presley and stuff like that. So I came in and I sprayed the room with nice lemon spray so when they came into the room they smelt the smell i had a barber pole a big big barber pole which would usually sit outside somebody's wall and that would rotate so when they came in they were getting the smells they were getting you know they looked at the barber pole so they instantly recognized that as a barber pole they're in the barber shop and then they were coming into song so those songs were songs they would have listened to when they were you know back in the day so it was setting up the atmosphere where they could feel comfortable they were able to relax and more importantly it was very very familiar to them plus I would be dressed up in my barber apron like an old-fashioned apron Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really 
from that first day, then um, everyone's seen a difference because the men sometimes didn't want to go to the hairdressers. They would stay in their rooms. They wouldn't want to come out. And with me, it was different because we could have conversations then about like, you know, things they wouldn't talk to a woman about, you know, their old girlfriends and how you re- how are you today? And maybe, you know, getting them opening up, you know, to man, man chat. Sure. And that's, that's, that's what people need. And they miss that, you know, cause they're not, they're not getting that in care homes. So that was the very first day. And then I, I started posting my work online because then I was just, I was just Lenny the mobile barber. I wasn't Lenny the dementia friendly barber. And how I became the Dementia Friendly Barber was the Alzheimer's Society in Northern Ireland had seen my work and they got in contact with me and they put me on a course, a Dementia Friendly course, and that's how I then became Lenny the Dementia Friendly Barber. And I then, as I built up my business, I then got a job in the care home as a care assistant. Mm-hmm. So I was actually doing 20 hours a week, hands-on care work. Um, and that really helped me with regards to like, because a lot of my clients, I would be nursing in bed. So, you know, they're, you know, on the last few months of life, weeks, I would do them in bed. So okay. I have to learn how to put the beds up, how to cut their hair in bed, how to move the beds, how to move wheelchairs, how to move this, that and the other. So working as a care assistant really helped me practically. Obviously, then I built the business up. So it took about a year. Um, building it up until I was then full time, um, traveling all over Northern Ireland. I've traveled. I've worked in New York. I work in New York once a year. Great, great. I'm going there again uh, on the 26th of December, and I work. I go for nine days holiday, but one day I dedicate as voluntary time to one care home in New Jersey, and I bring my jukebox on the plane. I bring Irish CDs, and we have an Irish barber day, and it's great. Oh, so, fun. Yeah. Cool. They love it, and they say they. I mean, this one time, this man, you know, I think that one of those songs when Irish eyes were smiling, he actually sang that whole song, you know, word for word in the corridor. Oh, how and neat! I didn't, like I didn't even know the words of the song, all of it, uh-huh. and this man, this man knew every word of that song. So, you know, with my business, it's all about it's very sensory. You know, you reminisce. So I, the music is getting them opening up to memories. So I used to go with my, my wife to the dance hall. Uh-huh. And I would ask them questions. So what was it like? You know, did you tell me what happened when you went into the dance hall? Did the ladies, were they standing? Were they waiting for you to come and ask them to dance? And <laughs> did you get a kiss at the end? Did you get a kiss at the end of the night? You know, <laughs> you know all these wee funny things. You know, that men like to have a bit of banter and a bit of crack. So that's, that's all a bit about, yeah. I and mean, it's so, it's fun. My job is to try and make these guys, um, just to give them, even if they have uh, once, if I get one smile or that, that we, you know, that we in the eye, you know, you know that it's registering, you know, these men are, some of them are struggling, you know, they're very fearful, you know how it is with dementia, just different levels of dementia, you know, and I'm having to really, some are trying to hit you, they're trying to stand up, sit down, they won't sit down. So it's not all easy, you know, although it looks great online and, Everyone loves what I do, but behind the scenes, they don't see, as you know, yeah, the reality, the reality of someone living with dementia. Yeah, well, I love your approach from because they just think of you know every time you walk by a salon, you smell the perms and you know, and yeah. and the women don't even really care for it, but they're used to it, you know. And then for a guy to have to go in there for that, so I, I love that you, you've you changed the aroma, you've got the welcoming music, you've got the visual, you dress the part, and then, you know, letting them be able to reminisce and then have it be, you know, a day for the guys. I try I try not to leave the ladies out. I, I do have Hasbro, Joy for All Pets. Yep. From America. Yep. Uh-huh. And I bring, that, I bring that with me, and it's a wee robotic dog, and I would give that to the ladies, you know, while I'm working with the men. Okay. Um, and then I, I am also working with a company that may, um, they take secondhand dolls and they, they, they make them better. You know, they make new clothes for them. I then deliver dolls to the care homes that I go to for the ladies. Oh, neat. Yeah, and that's really good. And then I have my silent disco, which is a new thing. Yeah, tell uh, us about that. So the silent disco um, has just started over here. It's basically wireless headsets and the headsets 
to the left and the right, they light up as the beat to the music goes, you know? So um, I will, I say, for example, I have five headsets. I'll put them on each individual person that wants it and I'll play nice music to them. And I, it comes with a mic. So I have a mic and I can hear what they're hearing. And once I speak into that, I go, hello, Mary, how are you? And she'll go, I'm good. Hello, Bill. And even ones that are maybe a partially deaf can really hear you better. Uh huh. That's worked really good for like, if there's, say, dance music on, or there's some funny music, you know, I'll say, put your hands up in the air, give us a wiggle, get uh -huh. the feet going, move your hands back and forth. So it's getting them to do exercise, it's mm -hmm. getting them to move, it's getting them to hear better. And that it's really all about a crack. And I'll have props, so I'll have, uh, I've got a, like a photo frame, a blow up photo frame you can take pictures with. I've got disco glasses, I've got glow up sticks. Just It's just all a bit of fun. It's just to try and have a bit of fun in what can be a difficult time for those, you know, that are going through you know, life with dementia. I try and mm -hmm. I'll give my, I'll give the dog and the babies and the, the, the silent disco to the staff and they'll go and bring it around the home. So everyone is benefiting from me being there. That was always my plan. Oh, that's very neat. That is, um, it's it's so well-rounded and so well thought out. It's like, I just want this in every care home, you know, it just. It's so much fun. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's like whenever, whenever we go, we say to him, oh, you're looking really good today. You know, you're looking really handsome. And then obviously that person has to then leave the salon and go out. And then the care assistants will then take over. And they'll go, oh, Jimmy, you are looking brilliant. You know, you're going to get a girl tonight and you're going to get a kiss. <laughs> so it's not only me, it's everybody, you know, because even the staff, they love the smells. They know whenever I'm there because they can smell me down the corridor. They can smell all my soaps, uh -huh. all the old soaps. I'll use um, Brill Cream. I'll use um, all the old fashioned, you know, Brit. Mm -hmm. They love Brit. Um, they love Old Spice aftershave. So I'll have all the old aftershaves as well to put onto them and again they're, they're remembering those smells from years ago and some of them haven't even used that in maybe years i mean they they can't believe it's still around you know because yeah. i buy it I buy it, I buy it online you know and um and, and get all the old-fashioned stuff that they would have used so it's a whole day it's 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 a whole day thing you know and it's, it's everyone's getting affected uh -huh. you know um, and then you have the times whenever you know it can be challenging where Maybe th this man one day is just not not happy. He's not he's not uh, in a good having a good day, you know. So he's very agitated. He's maybe sitting in the chair and he's moving about and he's he doesn't know where he is. Mm -hmm. So that's when I'll have to maybe turn the music down, bend down to him, look at him in the eye, tell him, even pat him on the shoulder. I, that's I mean, touch is so important. I'll pat him on the shoulder and reassure him. It's Lenny. I'm your barber. I'm here to give you a wee haircut. I'll show him my tools. You know, we tap in the head just to try and calm, calm him down. You know, so those are the things that people don't see that you have to try and... And there's many, every day is like that. You'll have your yeah. challenges. You know, I'll be um, having to maybe walk around with somebody cutting the hair while they're walking around. They won't sit down. Um, they're trying to hit me. And I know it's not their fault. You know, and then they'll they'll remember, oh, they'll say sorry. I said, it's not stuff, you know, it's nothing to be sorry about. It's fine, you know. Yeah. So every day is so different, but the, the setup is the same every day where I go. But obviously every client is different. Every care home is different. Um, and it's been, it's been an awesome two years. I mean, it's been, I love it. It's not like going to work. You know, when, yeah. like you, you know yourself, when you're doing something that you know that you're called to do, it just is so natural to you. To do it. Yeah, no, I, I get that because that's where I'm at too yeah. with my work. I, I walked away from a 25 year career in real estate. Never thought I would leave. Never in a zillion. Yeah. Um, I adored what I did. And by by two weeks after I left, it was like I was never in my old space. Like I was never a realtor. Oh. It's like, how so, can that be? You know? So, I, remember, I remember I left my job, I think it was a Friday, and I was working. Looking at and Friday working, going, this is my last day, you know, having to sell my soul. And, you know, and that was on the Friday. And by the Monday, I remember, because I started my job as the care assistant on the Monday. And I remember on the Monday, I was sitting, feeding a lady her lunch in her bedroom, looking out the window. You know, within three days, I was so, so unhappy, so miserable, so uncontented in my job. 
And I was on really good money to leave in that to basic pay, but yet I was totally fulfilled. Yeah, you just kind of wish everybody could could go there, but you know, yeah. so many people. I mean, and I understand worrying about money, and I still don't make what I was making. You know, not even close to what I was making when I sold real estate. But I still, you know, I make ends meet, and I love what I do, and I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I and that's, just, the, that's the idea. That's the key. Yeah. That's the key. Do you have future plans? Are you gonna like franchise what you're doing at all, or? Yeah, I mean, I do. I've, that's the plan because I mean I, I get calls you know all over the world you know? <laughs> yeah. and there's only there is only one, one of me you know what I mean I can't yeah. be everybody and um, my my plan would be I mean I would love to have you know a Lenny's barber shop in, in every care home or facility mm-hmm. that would that would be the plan um, but it's just getting the, the right people I'm gonna hook you up with somebody who um, is has a lot of salons in a lot of different communities in the US if you'd like I would be more than glad yeah. to connect you yeah because I, I need I need the help as much help as possible because the idea it's an it's a needed service you know it's definitely a needed service because mm-hmm. you know, nobody doing it there's a few people start since I've came on board there's people now starting to do it you know and that's yeah. always gonna happen you know you're yeah. always gonna get people See an idea and run with it, and that's fine. Um, but for me, I want it to be right. You know, I want it to be a good model that's going to um, be the same no matter where it is in the world, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I love it, and I'm very blessed. I'm a very blessed, man, to, to work with people with dementia. You know, it's just it's a privilege to, to come into their world. To um, I mean, I always say I meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, like my, my dad, I was saying, had died there last, last Thursday. And the funeral was on Monday. And my grandmother, obviously, it's her son. You know, she's 97. Yeah. And she's her, her son. But after the funeral, we come back to the reception. And um, she was sitting going, why, why are we here? She'd forgotten already. Uh-huh. Why she was there. And yeah. She's only early, st- early stages to mention. And it's sort of a godsend, in a way, for her to think like that. Yeah. In a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'll obviously, you know, we're not, I'm not going to go and say to her, oh, we're sitting here at dad's friend. No, I'm not going to bring her back down to that level of grief again. I'll maybe just say nothing or just talk about something different. Yeah. And that's what we've learned to do. You know, I'll, I'll come into their world, whatever conversation they're having, you know, some, some like you're my brother, you know, or we used to play football together, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We used to play soccer together. I go, yes, we did. But didn't we have good fun? Didn't we have good crack? Yeah, and, and I'll just go into whatever they're talking about. And obviously, I always try and keep it positive. If they're talking about something negative, I'll turn it around for them, and turn the conversation around to something positive. Um, to take them out of that we that we panic that we hold that they're in for those moments, you know. And you know yourself. There's many of those. It's so wonderful how you really, truly understand the journey and the, you know, just the techniques that you're talking about. Um, So many family members need to learn and still a lot of staff need to learn, you know, about really, you know, our our main goal has to be, are they safe? Are they happy? Are they pain free? You know, and then our tasks come into that. But you know, it's it's all about their comfort and not just their physical comfort, but like you said, their emotional comfort. Because um, I, I know with my mom, when my dad died, people people go, oh, "She's just doing amazing," and I'm like, "She's into old mom gear. She's taking care of everybody else. Are you doing okay?" She doesn't realize that the man in the casket's her husband, which again like what for your grandma was just a true gift because you don't want someone to keep spinning through that over and over. You just seem to have such good intuition. And then you, you seem to have really learned as you're going and are eager to learn new ways to bring them comfort and, and make their day, you know, a, a fulfilled day, which is really, really neat. Yeah. I think it's, it's also interesting. You know, I take a lot of tours when I go out because I speak around the country here. I have been to Ireland yet, though, but would love to come. <laughs> I'll pitch up anytime. But anyways, when I'm out traveling and, and taking tours of places, they always point out the salon. And not you're right, not once have I seen a barber shop. And I just think that that is thing that is really overlooked really overlooked um now one of the questions i wanted to ask you because i noticed this with with my own mom and when when the hairdresser was in for the ladies they just all perked up 
And do you see that with your guys? I, I was I was there last. I was at a place there a few days ago, and because uh, I only go back every six weeks, six weeks because the men don't need their hair cut every week. You know, it started at four weeks, and then you know the hair wasn't that long. So six weeks is is the average now that the, the older man, the older person, will get their hair cut. And you know these men, I'm getting told that these men are asking, you know, when's Lenny coming? You know, <laughs> when's he coming? Because the I mean, when when they come. You know, they have, we have so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these men are wanting to be first in the queue. You know, they'll be waiting for me, you know, from nine o'clock, they'll be getting their breakfast going, what time is Lenny coming out? <laughs> you know, and if I'm like 10 minutes late, for example, they'll be going, where were you? These men perk up because the difference is that I'm getting the men all together. I'm getting these like maybe at a time, maybe six men at one time in the room. And then one person will leave and then a new person will come in. And then I'm dancing about, you know, with, as the music comes on, maybe I'm shaking my legs and all new so they can see it. And um, <laughs> my hands and just getting them to do different things, you know. And the, the, he's laughing, he's laughing. You know, we're all having, it's, I put on a show. You know, as I'm cutting the hair, I may be shaking my leg at the same time. So I can, he's looking at that, you know, like shaking Stevens or something like that, you know. Um, so my day is full of me putting on, a little show for these men you know it's and even maybe sometimes i'm tired as you do you know every day sometimes we get tired well then i'm having to really I, i'll work at it and i'll make sure that these men you know they're being left in a good place well, before i leave you know and, and i'm I, it's, it's helping me you mm. know because it's, it's two-way it's a two-way thing here i mean even me going to work on wednesday after my dad died helped me because i'm looking after these men so it's it's completely a two-way thing you know, they're helping me, I'm helping them. Um, and always emotionally and everything else in our life. You know, so by me working, by me doing what I'm doing, they uh, these guys don't know what they're doing for me in all levels. But yes, go back to that. They 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 can't wait. They enjoy the Barber Day because it's fun. Do you get comments <coughs> from family at all? It must be hard because you're not there all the time. But I know that I, as a daughter, I could always see the difference. In, you know, she just sat. Yeah different and they, can see the difference because they I mean some of the men maybe are agitated but then when they come into the barber shop they're so relaxed mm -hmm. and the staff the staff can't believe that he is sitting for you you know they're saying to me I can't believe that you're shaving him because he does not let me shave him <laughs> you know and I'm going well <laughs> it's just the, it's just the atmosphere you know um, and then obviously I get a lot of families follow my page online you know you know and i have a lot of fans on that so i get all oh, families when i'm posting their pictures online oh that's my dad thank you so much he loved it you know because you know as we get older eyebrows are sitting like you know they're covering their eyes they can nearly barely see after six weeks and yeah. the ears are, the ears are like forest they're filled with hair <laughs> you know and it's something that the hairdressers just wouldn't have done so I'm yeah. getting, I'm shaving even the top of their nose. You know, I'll shave the actual top of their nose. Uh -huh. There's no hairs in the top of their nose. I'll shave all in around the ears, inside the ears, up the nose, eyebrows, so, and their hair, obviously. So they're, they're leaving feeling good, but they're looking pristine clean. And that's what the family is really like, because nobody wants to see your, your relative looking scruffy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't want that. You know, so I make sure they're clean shaven, they're looking, I put all the nice creams and, you know, all the nice, you know, I get stuff from Turkey, all this smelly stuff, you know, and they look good and they smell good. And I'll spray a wee bit of aftershave on them before they go. Do you use an electric razor or are you using a straight razor? Well, initially it'll be, um, it'll be like a yeah, battery powered one to get the hair off. Uh -huh. And then it'll be, it'll be a wet shave. It's always okay. a wet shave. Okay. Um, a wet shave with a clean blade every time. And I use old fashioned, proper old fashioned soap with the brush. Mm -hmm. I'll foam the brush, I'll foam it up, you know, put it on their face. So they then recognize, they know they used to use this themselves. Uh -huh. um, I, remember, I remember having one guy who was agitated and he just wasn't happy in the chair. And I was giving him a shave and he just wouldn't, he just wasn't happy, he wouldn't let me do it. And I remember getting, you have to be careful. But I got the razor and I, I held his hand with the razor up to his face. And I sort of let my grip go a bit and he started shaving himself, remembering how to shave. And I th thought that was amazing. Wow. He was able to, and he, he relaxed. And I had to help him at the end. But even for those few wee moments, he was shaving himself. He was actually doing it himself. Uh-huh. 
by just me, me guiding his hand up to his face, and that was it, and then me letting go. And I thought that was lovely. Um, that was about six months ago that happened. I thought it was really nice. It was just lovely to watch and for, him, for, for this guy to remember, oh, yes, I know how to shave. Yeah. A few moments before he completely forgot. And then maybe sometimes they, they, maybe, they wouldn't know how to shave, but they just can't remember, and they're frustrated. You know what I mean? And I'm having to joke around with them. And okay, I'll do it for you. I love getting shaved myself, you know, and um, whatever else. So it's just, like I say, every, every, every clan's so different. Um, mm -hmm. And you have to use so many different skills for, for each one. But it's for me, it's so easy. I don't even have to try. It just comes completely naturally. And I just go into whatever mode. I don't know how I'm like or where I've got it from, but I know that it's just in me to react that way. You know, without even having to try. Wow, that is really that is really neat. I just, um, I, I just adore your work, and I think it's so important to bring that that dignity and that fun back in. And you're doing that on so many levels. Um, I remember with my mom in the beauty shop, and I don't know if you run into this with the barber shop, but a lot of times the ladies wouldn't want to leave. You know, even after yeah. they got hair done, they like hanging out there. I mean, it was just truly an activity. I really want those men to stay in the room. Mm -hmm. I'll stay outside the room so they can still hear the music. That's what I always try and do. You know, um, I try and get them to stay because it's only one day in every six weeks. Yeah. And unless they really want to go back to their room, I will encourage them to sit and wait. And sometimes if I go and I might go and, you know, Mr. Smith doesn't want to come down. He just, uh -huh. and, and he's having a bad day. Well, I, I will go and speak to Mr. Smith and I will say, Mr. Smith, it's, hello, how are you? It's Lenny, the barber. And I will say, I have got you booked in for an appointment this morning at 10 o'clock. And I've came all the way from Belfast to see you. So are you coming down? <laughs> <laughs> Nine out of 10 times that works. Uh -huh. <laughs> like that's a, that's a wee technique. If I say to them, you know, you have an appointment, you have to come down. Yeah. You know. Because their mindset is, I want to stay in bed all day. I don't want to face the world. Or whatever they're going through in their mind, they just want to sleep. Yep. But I believe that it's really important for them to come out for that hour or whatever it is. That will set them up for that day. Mentally, they're going to be feeling better because they're, you know, they're hearing the music and they're hearing the crack and the chat. Well, and you're coming up to them says, you're important to me. I want to see you. I want to spend this time. I yeah. can you know, just for you. And well, definitely. Definitely. And they don't hear that a lot. It's compassion, really. I have, I have compassion for them mm -hmm. because I could be that person in years to come. You know, yeah. I could, you know what I mean? I could be that person that he's looked after. So I, that's the way that I look at it. Yeah, it could yeah. be any of us, that's for sure. Well, is there anything that we haven't covered so far that you'd like to mention what you're doing? It's just, it's so much fun. I just, I'm taking notes about, you know, the because you're really, you're doing aromatherapy, you know, you're doing the, the textile with the touch and the feel, you've got the music incorporated, um, yeah. you know, you've got the, the sights in terms of what you're wearing and the barber pole. I mean, there's just so many aspects that you've really incorporated. And then you go beyond that to, you know, having your, your robotic uh, dog therapy and, and the doll therapy. And you just, um, I, I can tell you just have such an open heart and oh, you yeah. definitely were meant to do what you're doing because it's, it's really having a great impact. And like I said, um, people all around the world are just fascinated by what you're doing. And, and that's, um, that's got to be, feel really good too. That it does that people are recognizing that, you know, what you're doing is something that's missing in the world and yeah. there needs to be more of it. People, people are sort of going like, why hasn't somebody done this before? You know, why is this, why has nobody thought about this? You know? Yeah. <laughs> why, I, I was going, well, they weren't meant to, it was meant to be for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. In order to reach you, you can go to the website, um, Lenny, the dementia friendly barber.com. That's Lenny, the dementia friendly barber.com. Or you can look at him, look him up on Facebook, follow his work and just put in Lenny, the dementia friendly barber there. And he'd be more than glad to, uh, to communicate with you and yes. Uh, and work with you. Well, thank you again for spending so much time with us today. Really appreciate this. I, I just wanted to catch on all over. It's just, it's very important work. And, 
you know, like you said, the women have had these salons forever, but the men deserve it too. They do. This is just a, it's a, it's a great extra way for people to, to connect. Thank you so much, Lenny. You have a great, great weekend and we'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you you so much. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.